Do you ever look up into the sky at night and wonder if something or someone could be staring back at you? Well, that's exactly what JWST felt when it took this brand new image of a pair of galaxies that was smiling back at the telescope from afar. Collectively known as ARP 107, this interacting pair is putting on a show for us, and we have quite a lot to explore and unpack in these brand new images from the world's biggest space telescope. We have a large spiral galaxy interacting and merging with a smaller elliptical shaped galaxy here, and they do have quite a happy charm about them. This interacting pair does remind us somewhat of the Cartwheel Galaxy, an interesting looking galaxy that was one of the first images ever taken by JWST. That one looks like a more extreme interaction, with the process likely giving this galaxy the spoked effect we can see in Webb's gorgeous image of it. ARP 107 has so far avoided the same exact fate, likely because the smaller elliptical galaxy doesn't seem to have smacked the spiral right in the centre and punched its way through, like we think happened in the cartwheel case. So here, we just have some disturbed spiral arms for now. These collisions and interactions do have interesting effects on the galaxies themselves. On one hand, the colliding and the gravitational effects that it brings with it often compresses gas down into clumps, improving the conditions for star formation and leading to the birth of many new stars in the galaxies. On the other hand, the violent interaction can also disperse a lot of gas, flinging it into space in clouds and jets, as we can see in the new JWST image quite nicely. And this in turn can deprive new stars of the materials they would need to form. Swings and roundabouts, stars and dust. Some form and some don't. The two galaxies we think will eventually merge and become one galaxy over the next few hundreds of millions of years, meaning the smile may well be lost in the far future. And all of this is happening 465 million light years away from Earth in the Leo Minor constellation. As well as the galaxies, it's always cool to check out the background of JWST images, as there tends to be countless galaxies back there, peeking through the darkness. This is because JWST is absolutely incredible at collecting long wavelength infrared light, and it sees some of the faintest objects in the universe. These distant galaxies are beautiful, fascinating objects, so be sure to explore the full image if you can. I'll leave a link to download it in the description. The image that I'm showing you is made of a combination of many wavelengths of light that JWST can detect. The telescope has instruments that can detect near-infrared light, and also longer wavelength mid-infrared light that's less energetic. This image combines both of those types of light to get the beautiful picture in front of us. The near-infrared data comes from a detector on board the telescope called NERCAM, the Near Infrared Camera, and it's shown here in white. It highlights older, cooler stars in both galaxies, and the gas bridge between them shines brightly too, while the background galaxies also appear really bright in these wavelengths. The mid-infrared data is taken by MIRI, the mid-infrared instrument, and this shows young stars and star-forming regions nicely, as well as the best view we can get of the collision point, where we can see the hole that's been punched in the spiral galaxy. We do also have images made from these two types of light separately too, so let's have a look at those. Starting with the mid-infrared light we just discussed. This is what the pure mid-infrared light looks like for this galaxy pair. The resolution isn't as good as it is for the near-infrared light, as is always the case for longer wavelengths of light. The longer the wavelength, the worse the resolution, and the bigger the mirror you need to get down to fine, fine resolution. Despite that, there are still some amazing things in this image. Firstly, at the very centre of the spiral galaxy, there is something incredibly bright surrounded by diffraction spikes. Things that are usually only seen around bright stars that are very close to us. For example, this spiky star here in the near-infrared image, which we'll look at closer in a second, is in our own Milky Way galaxy and is way, way closer to us, so it looks way brighter than the galaxy usually would. This bright object in the spiral galaxy is actually the supermassive black hole at the centre of the galaxy, glowing so brightly as it swallows very hot matter that's shining very brightly in mid-infrared light. It's not the black hole itself that's glowing, but all of that matter swirling around it and falling towards it. Friction from collisions of particles heats it up, it gets very hot, and it shines very brightly in this image. The spiral galaxy itself is forming millions of stars, which is why the spiral arms are so, so bright in the blue and white colours, and it looks great. 
I also love the green background galaxies here, especially this one just off the bottom of the spiral, and this one in between the interacting pair is so pretty too. It is much more in the background, so it's not really between the pair, but still looks great. It's more visible here than in near-infrared light, because mid-infrared light is way less blocked by dust, so we can see deeper into dusty regions with this type of light too. The blue hazy blob next door is the elliptical galaxy, which is forming many fewer stars and is correspondingly dimmer than the spiral. Let's switch now to the purely near-infrared view, which is a wider shot and the resolution is much higher. This image also shows nicely the stars in the two galaxies in the crisp white colours, and the translucent bridge of stars and dust between the two galaxies is much more obvious here too. Countless background galaxies pop out of the darkness here, giving us a menagerie of objects to look at. This pair of galaxies has of course been imaged by other telescopes previously too. Before JWST, the best infrared telescope in space was the Spitzer Space Telescope, which took these fairly low-res images of the pair in 2005. Do note that Spitzer is just way smaller than JWST. Its primary mirror, the important part that determines how good your images are, was only 85 centimeters, only a few bigger than JWST's secondary mirror, which is 74 centimeters. For reference, JWST's primary mirror is six and a half meters. That is quite the difference. Here, the left image is shorter wavelengths from Spitzer, 3.6 microns, which is pretty comparable to NERCAM data. The middle image is longer wavelengths, but they're still a lot shorter than what JWST's MIRI instrument can do. And the right image is a composite of the two. Hubble has also taken snaps of ARP-107 in the past using its ACS camera. I'll leave you to take a good look at this one. Find the black hole at the center, the Milky Way stars, the star bridge between the pair, and compare it all with the JWST image. Notice how many fewer galaxies are visible in the background here, and how different the resolution is, and how the structure we can see varies between the two as well. Leave me any questions or comments you have down below, and thanks for watching. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye!